Fist and Shout is considered by some as the most famous single in rock history. It's certainly one of Beatles' signature records, one of their most famous records. And the second track I'll be covering and reacting to is She Loves You, which is actually the highest selling record in the United Kingdom by the Beatles. It's one of the highest selling records in general in the US too. Now, I just find it pretty cool that through YouTube, I get to kind of explore what is a culturally significant, important a piece of history you know especially in terms of music and culture it's certainly up there watching the beatles live um one of the performances i'll be covering is in color and one of them isn't it's in black and white so i hope you guys enjoy these reactions here we go we have twist and shout first by the beatles if you do end up enjoying the video hit me with a like maybe share it with a friend or if you haven't already subscribe to the channel join our awesome awesome community let's go The crowd is so loud. <laughs> they knew what they were doing there. I think some of the girls fainted when they did that. You know what's one thing I wonder about quite often is Ringo's ability to hear the band. Can he even hear what the hell they're singing? Uh, he just plays in his own rhythm, I guess. He has a rhythm memorized of what the song should sound like. Um, and he just plays to that, I guess, because there's no way he's hearing anything, right? Let's back this up again. Yeah, this is really just as their superstardom is going into like mania levels, right? This is really where it's taking off. Uh, very, very interesting to also see how they approached being a band, how they all looked the same, uh, not looked the same. They had similar haircuts. They had um, the suits going on. They all rocked the same uniform, if you want to call it. I mean, in terms of image, building an image around a band, I think they were super conscious about that and maybe one of the first to do so because you think about their album covers too. Their album covers are so iconic. So they were certainly thinking of it as this whole kind of vision together, which is really cool. I think, I mean, they set the blueprint for artists to come after them. I think Kanye West is really fantastic at that. It's one of his best things that he has. Um, do you know what I might do? I might actually play a segment of this black and white version of... Um, Twist and shout too. Did I have it up? Oh, I had this version as well. Let's let's try this one as well. Here. Was bass playing the bass cool before Paul McCartney came along? I feel like bass was like always the secondary to the guitar, even maybe tertiary to the drums. But I mean, you have a left-handed, he was the bass player, right? Uh, Paul McCartney. I feel like he made being a bass player cool. <laughs> Look at the 
Y'all were Ringo high. Yeah, a lot of people were telling me that Ringo is actually considered in his own way a very unique drummer, but well, very well respected. I don't hear his name being brought up. I hear a lot of other guys, even the dude from Rush, Neil Peart, or so, I think it was his name. Um, you know, the, the normal ones, John Bonham. But you don't hear his name as often. But to me, he's got a really cool style and especially his ability to keep his own tempo and rhythm. <laughs> Because he can't hear anything. They're just screaming. Start doing this with their heads, it's over. Girls are fainting and dying left and right. Can I just highlight something, right? I don't know, sometimes there's just a look in a person's eye, and there's something about them, they've got some kind of fire in their eyes. That's a pretty cool picture of Paul McCartney, man. You could tell there's something up with that dude. He looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, let's let's talk about the music a little bit, maybe. Um, I think a lot of your taste in music is truly shaped by what you hear from like the ages of like eight to like 18. That's really your core time as a music consumer. And it shapes... Even sometimes the way you talk, the way you act, you know, so much of it. And what I grew up listening to certainly shaped me. And it means that this kind of music, their early stuff, their early period of the Beatles, it just doesn't quite connect with me in the way maybe it does to some of the viewers who are going to watch coming from a hip hop place. Uh, I like their more kind of, ex not eccentric, uh, experimental stuff like A Day in the Life or when they're being kind of really simple and melodic, hyper melodic, like tracks like Yesterday or um, I heard Blackbird was really, really good. Kind of stripped down too. I really like when they did that. And I've heard, seen some of their things slightly later on too, and I like it much more than this kind of poppier style that they had in the beginning. But um, I don't know, I guess that's shaped from what I've been listening to as, as a kid. Um, some music just comes more naturally to me, like Led Zeppelin, because it has those fantastic grooves. Um, okay, let's check this one out too. This is She Loves You. So this is the second track I was I was going to react to. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me, that was very low. That was very low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah. see Paul take the lead. He's normally like backing up John. It's always the head shot. Like I can hurt you too. Apologize to her because she loves you, and you know that can't be bad. She loves you. 
you know, I sometimes I wonder what it was. Why was it that there, there, there was this kind of mania around them? And I think part of it is the fact that obviously they were very good. But secondly, it was that they were first and they came in a time where there wasn't a lot of boy bands like this making uh, music that sweeps across uh, generations, as people were telling me, grand ch grandmas and young people liked them at the time. Uh, they, kind of, they were kind of rebellious. It was everything together, I think, that made girls go so crazy for them. They're just dying. insane how people reacted to the, reacted to them but you know i think it's really good to see that good people receive this kind of acclaim because the interviews i've watched certainly way more interviews of lennon and mccartney than i had of their music and I, as them as people i really liked them a lot specifically john i think john had a brilliant revolutionary mind uh, that's what I really loved about Tupac Shakur. I think he thought out of the box. And I think John Lennon was very similar in, the way, in that way. So was Paul McCartney. I mean, talking about taking LSD uh, to, to crowds, to young people in interviews in the 60s, dude. That wasn't safe to do that at the time. He really opened some minds. Um, okay, let's talk about, lastly, uh, I wanted to speak about... Um, yeah, the music, the music, the growth of the band. That's what I wanted to talk about. They're a fantastic example of what is possible as artists because of their growth and evolution over time. This early stuff is not for me, but I think everyone can agree that they went through a metamorphosis. I mean, you have this here, this thumbnail here. I think this is a great way to show it. I mean, they look like completely different people. I mean, look at Lennon, dude. He looks like, you know, cool Jesus or something. Um, uh, hippie rebel Jesus um, they just went through this metamorphosis and they started making this experimental brilliant music pushing boundaries with album covers and all types of different things and I think it's very great to see and a great example for musicians and any artists out there that you can evolve over time and begin with more simplistic stuff and end with stuff that you know goes over generations as being influential so it's pretty fantastic in that sense um pretty cool man it's uh it's cool to be able to see a history a part of like cultural history as i was saying in the intro so two thumbs up from me